When a new car is released, the response is usually a combination of excitement and primal rage. And that polarization is most prevalent when we're talking about a beloved nameplate. There aren't many fan bases that have the same passion as Tacoa Bros. And there's some good reasons for this. While there have been some common problems with Tacomas, historically they've been long-lasting, trustworthy trucks that offer the utility for work, the capability for recreational activities, and a manageable size. If that's all you care about, then maybe the old third generation truck is all you need. Driving the tried and true third gen is a familiar experience, not just because the truck has roots back to 2005 and this model itself has been around since 2016, but because it also feels like an old school truck. Under the hood is Toyota's 3.5 liter V6. This is the 2GR FK for the nerds, and it makes a respectable 278 horsepower, but you have to access the high RPM in order to get it. And it was paired up with a six-speed auto that could occasionally get confused, especially in the earlier part of the generation. Though you could thankfully get it with a six-speed manual transmission that had its own set of quirks. At the very least, this setup is smooth from a takeoff and can pull up to 6,800 pounds. On entry-level third gens, you could save more money and go with a four-cylinder. This iron block 2.7 liter can outlast a vampire except it makes a little less power than a base Toyota Corolla. I owned one and honestly, it was enough for around town and even the highway so long as you had good depth perception. The V6 would drop the zero to 60 time by about three and a half seconds without really hurting the gas mileage. So for most people, I think the V6 is worth the price premium. The third gen also made available most off-road features that people could want. Among that option list was part-time four-wheel drive with a low range. There was a rear locker, brake-based torque vectoring, off-road modes, crawl control, underbody protection, tow hooks, and there were also various suspension setups that would tailor the dampening to a given trim's purpose. And if you want a new or used Tacoma, let me recommend Royal South Toyota in Bloomington, Indiana, the friendly community-focused dealership that let me test drive the tacos used in today's video along with countless others over the years. The interior of the third gen also feels durable. There might be a lot of hard plastics, but the construction of everything feels solid. Even here after 47,000 miles, there's like zero rattles. It also has a straightforward layout, simple analog controls, a few handy storage solutions. The bed also had a couple of tricks and was made of a durable composite as standard. Though with the dated origin of this, there's bound to be some areas that are lacking, like the infotainment system. As simple as it was, there was no wireless car play, the resolution and response time were also unimpressive. A lot of the materials feel pretty cheap. The seating position for a lot of folks was awkward. Me at six foot three, I actually do have enough space, but because of the seat shape and the high floor, my thigh support is underwhelming. And it seems like all of these criticisms are so polarizing. There's people that are like, it's a truck, I want it to punish me. And other people are looking at the price tag and expecting more. As usual, I think the truth lies somewhere in the middle. But Still, if you're my height and you have someone sitting behind you, backseat passengers will probably plot your demise. The ride quality was also okay. So taking this on a tattered road, it reminds me of an old school truck. You're gonna feel most of the road. The rear end can definitely feel jittery. However, especially with the TRD off-road and the standard SR5 suspension, even though it's not smooth over your small to medium-sized imperfections, most things that you're gonna throw it through won't torment you. You can take it over big potholes without it really crashing into the cab. Though if you're taking it around broken pavement while cornering, the leaf springs, the live rear axle, they begin to show more of their inherent flaws. The steering is also pretty old school. It's light, it is completely numb, it's slow, and the brakes are spongy and can be hard to modulate. The third gen is a bit clumsy, though at the very least, it's easy to drive around town. So there's quite a few things that I hope the new truck addresses and it better for the money. We have a new engine that makes more power at lower RPM. We have better gearing in the automatic. We still have a manual transmission, if we're too cool for two pedals, and we have a new platform. So it should handle and ride better, along with improved packaging for more interior space. Let's start there. So for tall people, you have more than enough headroom. My knee room is okay. The driving position is far improved. I can get the steering wheel out a little bit further so I can have my seat 
in a comfortable position without feeling like I'm reaching. The seat itself sits a little further up, which improves the thigh support, and I do have power adjustable lumbar. However, some longer bottom cushions would have been nice. I also think Toyota did a good job freshening up the aesthetic, even here at this trim. We have rubber grab handles, very little glossy stuff, so it should be easy to clean, and there's copious amounts of storage, even a little bit more in the door panel than before, along with some molly panel type stuff. Where there's no improvement is build quality. Some things fit a little bit looser, like the knobs here, and they also use a little bit more hard touch plastic. If you remember before, you had that like rubber vinyl stuff on the door panel and the dash, that's gone. In fact, they also make you pay even more for a few other features that were standard in 2023, like a power adjustable driver's seat, a leather wrapped steering wheel, a rear window that opens. This even goes without dual zone automatic climate control now, and most surprisingly, a dampened tailgate. Yeah, they did add some triggers on the outside and a power option, but you're gonna have to pay more for those. Thankfully, you can still get a short or long bed double cab. They also offer an extra cab with some handy storage solutions, but there's no longer a back seat with that. Dimensionally, the bed width has also been increased by two inches. A couple other details, the tailgate and hood are lighter than they were before. But let's get back to the cabin. The tech is a big improvement. The resolution, brightness, response time, all considerably better. It comes with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard, and you'll have a choice of a smaller, large digital dashboard. It's configurable, easy to read, no complaints there whatsoever. Toyota has also added a few features to the option list, like a head-up display, ventilated front seats, a heated steering wheel and a removable center channel Bluetooth speaker with the JBL sound system. Neat stuff, but I'm sad to see that the handbrake was replaced with an electronic switch. Overall, I have a positive impression of the new cabin and I dig the look. Let me know your thoughts. In the back seat, it is maybe a little bit better. I think the cushion is more comfortable, but back to back, if you had complaints about the rear seat legroom and the old truck, the new one is not noticeably better and there's also no rear console vents. The seat it does flip up in a new way, which allows for improved storage underneath, though if you fold the seat, there's no more of that durable material to make the best use of that space. Overall, I would call the interior an improvement, but it's not night and day. On the outside, we'll see a few more features like standard LED headlights, proximity entry too, and personally, I really like the style, especially from the back. The front end of the old Tacoma I think was a little bit more cool, especially with the LED DRLs, but I think after some time, the overall consensus here will be positive. I think what had most people fearful of this new generation was the death of the V6. In its place is a 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four with a few different variants available, including an upcoming hybrid or a detuned unit for the SR. After learning more about this engine and driving it, I'm happy. You have the same horsepower figure, but we're up on torque, 317 pound feet. And this means far improved mid-range power. It's also hooked up with either an eight-speed automatic or a revised six-speed manual transmission. Gas mileage has not improved dramatically over the old powertrain. This move was supposedly more for emissions, but it's made a big improvement on passing power. Even if it now sounds like an entry-level Toyota Camry swallowed a whistle. You get a little bit of that turbo induction sound. And this transmission is really well tuned. More than happy to downshift whenever you want it to. However, there's no way a turbo four could match the V6 in longevity. Or could it? Crucially, time will tell all, though it seems Toyota made the right moves. The 2.4 liter turbo is based on the reliable, naturally aspirated 2.5 liter, and it's a relatively simple engine compared to the twin turbo V6 in the Tundra. It has a single twin scroll turbo, there's a vacuum operated wastegate, the variable valve timing doesn't use a motor like the regular 2.5 either, and in the Tacoma, Toyota says the turbo has been upgraded for commercial use so it can handle heat better. The coolant piping is also larger here compared to the other applications. I'll link some mechanical reviews by the car care nut and a chief engineer for Toyota so you can know all of the nuances. Toyota has been making turbocharged engines globally now for a while. This is a new model, but before we say it can't match the V6, we should let Toyota prove themselves, as this new powertrain feels much more potent in day-to-day -day driving. And this is exactly what we need when we're asking three to sometimes 
$5,000 more. The improvements don't stop there. Driving it on the same back road, the steering feels much more responsive more direct without feeling darty. It's still light and pretty numb, but it retains that easy to maneuver characteristic. Body rolls under control. The brake pedal is more linear now too. And for 2024, discs are standard in the rear. I think the only thing that I was mildly disappointed to see was that we don't have an improvement in towing capability, though at least the payload numbers for most see a bump. Now on the same disgusting Indiana back road, this definitely feels like a truck. You get some jitteriness around the rear end. You're gonna feel most of the pavement imperfections. In fact, comparing the old SR5 to this SR5, I think the old one was a little softer, but I think this one is more smooth. In the old truck, you really feel the difference between the front end and rear end hitting the same bumps. But in this one, it feels more well controlled. It also shudders less after encountering potholes. The coil sprung suspension has made a substantial difference here. I think overall, this was a bigger improvement generation to generation than the new Sequoia and the Tundra. Now you can still get a leaf sprung model if you go with the Axos cab or the SR trim, but I can't report on that just yet. And in case you're wondering, this retains the same wide variety of configurations that will give you different dampening and different off-road features. Something that we also see more of this year as you can get a front sway bar disconnect. The Limited will give you a full-time four-wheel drive system, which I think is cool. That luxury grade will also present adaptive dampeners if you want them. And the Pro gives you shocks in the seats, which sounds a bit gimmicky, but I'll reserve my judgment for now. And yes, if you want to, you can remove the front air dam with a believe seven screws. This will allow you to access all 9.5 inches of ground clearance, similar to last year. Pulling up to highway speeds, this thing is still quiet. It is pretty windy out and you hear a lot of that, but tire noise is kept down. And this comes with actual lane centering for the first time in a Tacoma with adaptive cruise control all as standard. Of course, I think a lot of the demographic here might not care for that, but at least it's well calibrated. You have blind spot monitoring standard on most models too. With virtually any redesign of a major product, there's going to be a lot of vocal criticism. And I think this new Tacoma deserves some of it, mainly because of the price. Without the base utility package, there's a high step in. Even this SR5 stickers at 43.5. Toyota had a lot to prove with this one. And while I'm still upset by the numbers, the powertrain is so much more usable, while also, in my opinion, retaining a promising future. This rides in a more composed manner. It handles better, offers an even wider variety of features, the seating position was improved, and all of the versatility and a six-speed manual transmission are still there. As I said in the beginning, a lot of truck people might not care about those things. And for you, the third gen is actually a better truck because it's much cheaper and it does have a more proven powertrain without a realistic loss in capability. But with a redesign, the goal is to make it better. This involves some level of risk, and in this case, some cost. While Toyota cheaped out in some subtle yet unfortunate ways, and I worry they're pushing financial boundaries, if you can afford it, the fourth gen Tacoma beats the old truck in almost every way. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like to help me take on the maniacal YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more fun, detailed car content without fluff. Consider becoming a channel member for an additional podcast and to help me take this to another level. I'll catch you in the next one.